loudly enough. Can the people way in the back hear me? Is everybody? As long as everybody else is quiet, yes. <laughs> thank you. Um, thanks for coming. It's really nice to see so many faces here and I'm delighted to, this is actually the first time I've ever shown this much of my figurative work all together. So it's really exciting for me Many of these pieces have been in drawers <laughs> and my closet, and they are very happy to be out in the world once again. So the work here is almost a retrospective. It's work from as far back as 2002, when my husband and I lived in Hawaii. Some of this work was done in Colorado, and then there's a few new pieces in the show that were done here. So it's kind of a long time span of my work. Um, I'm going to just talk for a little bit. I don't have a lot to say, but I'm hoping that if questions occur to you while I'm talking, that you feel brave enough to stick up your hand and, and ask me what, what's bugging you, what you want to know. I'm happy to share with you as much as I can about my work and my process. Um, but I'm just going to start a little bit with my history as an artist and a little bit about my process, and then I'll let you take over from there. Um, I was not an artist as a child. I did <coughs> not draw as a child. I colored, and I really loved coloring books, but um, my family, we were musicians, and I played music, and I didn't really think of myself as an artist. Um, when I went to college, I was a little lost, and I floundered. <laughs> I think I had every major you could have for at least 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> but I had a friend that was taking painting, and I went to visit him in the painting studio one day. And I walked in, and I was at first hit by the smell of turpentine. Oh, wow. And then I saw the paint and the paintings, and it was like a you know, a bolt of lightning or something, I was like, wow, this is interesting. I, and that was it. I wanted to be a painter. Um, <laughs> that was all it took, I guess. <laughs> and so I quickly flopped over into the art world. And I think because I didn't draw as a child, it was really important to me that I get good at drawing. I thought, you know, if I can really draw, then then I will have confidence, then I will feel like I can be an artist. And, and somehow that seemed like the basic for me, the, like the first thing I needed to do. And I was fortunate because the school that I went to was fairly small, and they were quite traditional in the way that they taught art, and so there was a lot of figure drawing. And I had wonderful, wonderful people teaching me how to draw and helping me sort of forget what I knew and learn how to, to draw. And um, so that's really where it started for me, drawing the figure, was in college. And that was where my love for art was first really ignited. And I, I did graduate with a degree in art. Um, and then I sort of, you know, floundered and waited tables and bartended and <laughs> gained a lot of experience doing other things. But this whole time I was still drawing. I was still finding community life drawing groups and I was trying to go to those once a week. And the life drawing was sort of the thing that has been a, a continual event in my life. I've always drawn from the figure ever since I first started to draw. So um, what, what happened was after drawing the figure long enough, I started to look at my work and say, well, you know, I'm not very good at hands. So I wanted to be good at hands. So then I would spend a lot of time just drawing hands. I would even draw my own hand. And I would look at it and do a drawing, and then flip it over and do a drawing, make a fist, do a drawing, until the hands got a little easier. And it was the same with the face. 
you know, we tend to avoid the face because somehow drawing faces is scary. I, I'm not really sure why that is, but um, it was the same thing where I thought, well, I, I want to get good at faces, so I'm just going to draw faces. And so every time I had a person in front of me, I would draw the face. And that's kind of how it went along. Um, in terms of when I'm drawing a, a person, I really do prefer to work from a live model, somebody who's right there in front of me. Um, and what interests me isn't the human being as sort of a generic representation of humanity. Um, I really like the individual. I'm interested in what I call the snowflake quality. What is it that makes each one of us unique? Yes, it's the way we look, but it's also kind of like what we've been through and who we are. And um, I just find that fascinating. And so that's really what I'm seeking, which is obviously why I've become more and more of a portrait artist and less and less of just a figure painter. Um, and like I said, I like to work from a live model, somebody who's right there in front of me rather than a photograph. Out of all of the works that are here today, there are only two that I did start to finish entirely from a photograph. The rest of them were done where I started the painting from the live sitting and I took photographs during the live sitting and then completed the painting from that. Um, probably an even greater majority of the works here today were done entirely from a live sitting. And a live sitting would be about three to three and a half hours usually, um, where the person takes a pose and they hold still and, and I try to capture what I see. And what's exciting for me, go ahead, John. Uh, it sounds like, I want to go back a little bit before okay. you continue on with the figure. It sounds like you had like an aha moment with the turpentine when you walked into the painting studio. Yeah. <coughs> Did you have an aha moment when you started to feel like you could really do the figure, figure drawings and, and it really became comfortable and natural or no? No, I feel like I'm still waiting for that moment. <laughs> well, I, you know, I think what happens with art as life, you know, we have sort of milestones that we look at that we want to reach. And so we strive towards them. And when we get there, then there's another milestone. And then you see that it can just go on and on forever. And I think, you know, when I look at my work now, I can see that I've come a long way. But I can also see that I have a ways to go. And that becomes very exciting. So, Anne? I know you've done a lot of work with Joshua trees and other trees and other vegetation. Do you find a correlation between the human figure and those? Absolutely. I think that it's really important to recognize that we are nature. And we are part of this world. And so whether I'm painting a person or a tree or a cactus or a flower or a rabbit, um, I try to approach everything in the same way, you know, with compassion, with sensitivity. I try to bring my heart into it. Um, I was wondering if, since you work with so many individuals and you're really into the individual qualities, if when you met them, you kind of felt their energy and you, you know, you, you have a connection with them. If you wanted to change their hair or pose them differently or put on jewelry or take off jewelry or clothing, no? No, I really want them the way they are, the way they're the most comfortable. Even when the person takes a pose, I want them to choose a pose that feels right for them so that who they are is coming through rather than what I would hopefully project on them. Does that answer your question? Well, kind of, but I know from long, you know, from our history that um, artists would see that someone was um, a certain way and want to have the accoutrements match how they were you know, the aristocracy and all that. 
And then I've read that Annie Gibowitz will look at someone and they'll come in in a, you know, like a pink blouse or something, but she sees a biker chick and so she has them put on some leather, which, which I'm, I'm just wondering if you spot things about people that maybe is their true self, but they're coming into pose, so they're do themselves up with something that maybe doesn't really match who they are, and, and if that comes into play. I think it comes into play only in the way that I might not be able to feel who they truly are if they themselves don't know. But in terms of me trying to push them in that direction, push them in some direction, that feels kind of pretentious to me. I guess um, I wouldn't presume to know who you truly are any more than I would presume to know who I truly am. And I guess for me, painting is like asking questions. You know, what's really there? What can I really find about the essence of this subject? 